the uh, last week we talked about this journey that we've been on with uh, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 4. And um, uh, Jade asked me this question, but uh, I made a comment, we'll be on this for a couple of weeks. And he said, uh, you, a couple of weeks on just chapter 4. I said, yeah, I just feel like I, I, I want to, because our, our topic on this is this word rest. It's rest. Uh, you know, arresting God. And that's what the, the, the writer is, is telling it. With all the carnage, with everything that's going on, with all the issues they're dealing with, all their life being totally whacked out, you know, don't forget about the, not just the decision you made, but why you made the decision. Because these are, are Jews. He's not trying to convert them. These are, these are people who were, you know, grew up in the Jewish faith, had been sitting in, in rabbinical uh, discourse on what was taking place with the old day. Grew up hearing about the, 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 the big guys, you know, Joshua and Moses and uh, angels. And that's what we've been talking about. Hebrews is written from a comparison standpoint of what is, you know, how does Christ fit into this mosaic? And so uh, I was so excited last week because I was able to say, you know, we were on chapter 14 and we finished chapter 14. So now it's time to move to chapter, to, to, to excuse me, not chapter 14. Chapter 4, you know, okay, so I stuck an extra number in front of it then, so, okay. There's not a 14. There's not a 14. I did that intentionally. It was a test to see if you were paying attention, so uh, that we we're finally through with, with, with Chapter 4, and it's time to move to Chapter 5. And then, and then I had a conversation uh, with a dear friend of mine, Alejo, and I felt this overwhelming sense of, not yet. It's not time to move. That we need to spend more, one more week on this subject of rest in God. And the reason for it, the reason I wanted to spend today is that when, uh, when, it, when you look at scripture and you look at Bible study, we're, we're reading stuff that's literally been written not a hundred of years ago, but you know, if I, I love going to Europe. And the reason why is because we think that the United States is this old, a bunch of old things and old history or what have you. And then you go to Europe, right? Yeah. It's, uh, and you know, I remember when I was in high school, I got a chance to take a trip with 120 high school kids, and we had seven, uh, uh, seven countries in, in, in six weeks. It was wild. It was just, it was 42 days. We were, I, I saw more churches. I never wanted to see another church again by the time I came back home again. But what was wild is that one of the places we went was a little place called Auxerre, France, which is about 90 kilometers south of Paris. And the reason I went there was because my sister was there on a rotary exchange program at the same time I was there. And so I talked to the, the, the leaders and I said, I, you know, I'm homesick. I'd love to go and see my sister Phyllis. And so sh they said, well, we'll make arrangements for you. And I still remember it was, it was a wild experience because they, they made these little flashcards for me because I didn't speak any French. You know? And so it, on one side of it says, uh, 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 I, I'm an American. And on the other side it says, je suis un American. Okay, and it says, I, um, uh, I speak no French, je, uh, je ne uh, sais no parle no, no français, okay, okay, and so, and, and so that stuff, and somebody asked me, said, do you speak French? I said, un peu, and so they going, nah, nah, nah. un peu, a little, <laughs> un peu, that's it. <laughs> so I had these little flashcards, but it got me all the way to Auxerre, France, and so I got off the train, and my sister was waiting for me, you know, and, and she took me to the home, the house that she was staying in with this family, and the house was 700 years old, okay? And it was, it was, it was, and it was, it was, it was quaint. It was, it was, it was kind of what we'd call a townhomey kind of look or whatever. And it just, it struck me, you know, this 1950s home that we had in Lake Charles, Louisiana, you know, we thought was an old home because the, the, the doors wouldn't rattle and my dad didn't know how to fix it and stuff. Uh, and, it's, and it's the same issue we're dealing with. When we look at scripture, we look at what's going on. How do you take what we've been reading in Hebrews with the author of Hebrews and bring it forward to today? And I realized that I wanted Alejo to tell a little bit about his journey and his story. So I'm going to invite him to come up here, and he and I are going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him some, some questions, and we're going to spend some time having him walk through what is it like to rest What's it like to rest in God, especially under very trying and difficult circumstances? You know, right? And so this is not something that we're going to read about. Today we get a chance to have somebody kind of explain what they experienced in their journey and the impact that it had on this. So if you all have not had a chance to meet him, welcome Alejo Vignanos. 
who are hearing this message from the writer of Hebrews, we know it's around 66, 67, 68, somewhere late 60s AD. You know, we know Nero's in, in, in power, and we know that the, the Christians, the people who believe in Christ and proclaim to believe in Christ, uh, what's happening is they are under severe attack and carnage. And so if you think of the times that they're in, it's highly destructive. I have a hard time picturing that because I live in Twin Lakes. Uh, I can stand out on my street corner and I can proclaim God all I want and the, and the police are not going to come and arrest me, throw me in jail or whatever. Um, but Alejo, I, <clears throat> when, I, when I think about your journey, uh, because with the last name Orvignanos, you're not from Beaumont. No. Okay, not from Beaumont. Uh, also, check, uh, say something. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the, the, uh, I, I, you were from Mexico, and there was a point in time in your life that you experienced something that's very hard for us to picture, uh, that we've read about in, in, in the newspapers and watched on television. You were actually kidnapped in Mexico, right? Because that is actually a way that people, it, it's kind of like a career path that people have, where they go that's and they, right. they, they kidnap people specifically for ransom. Exactly, only good looking people. The only good looking people, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell, tell us about that experience. Well, um, it was, yeah, my name is Alejo Robañanos. I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a man, I'm a father, and I'm a financial advisor. Um, I, 20 years ago, I was born and raised in Mexico. Um, I was recently married, and um, I just work, was working in the stock exchange in Mexico as a, as a trader. And um, we were just uh, working from continuously from 9 to 3. It was a very hectic environment, very nice. Uh, I come from a very loving family. I was recently married with, with my wife, Lorena. And I, after work, I just w went out and to a doctor's appointment, and I was wearing a suit and tie. And, uh, and after the doctor's appointment, I go out, and uh, I take a taxi to, try to go back home. And when I was in the taxi, um, small conversation with a with this guy that was driving, and it was those little bugs that you see in Mexico City. I don't know if you have seen the movies or, or on TV, that's thousands of little Volkswagen bugs with uh, just one seat here, two seats in the back, no, no seat but or anything, obviously. And, uh, and, and there was like space here that they take out that chair for you to go in and out easy. So it's, it's very common in Mexico. So I get there, and, uh, and suddenly this guy obviously was uh, getting cahoots with, with more people. And uh, in the stoplight, open the door, and some other two guys come in inside this little bug, and a Volkswagen bug, and uh, they said, go to the ground, blah, 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 and they start hitting me. You, you, and they start cussing at me, and they said, you're going to be in such much trouble, and I had a gun in my head. And they start take, taking everything away from me, and um, I had a chain, and they take it, and my, I mean, keys, to wallet, everything. And they took out this ring. I was, hey, give me your ring. And he took it out. And I was on the floor, and I said, I don't know why. I mean, I was just like furious that was happening to me. And I said, give me back my ring. And I said, what are you saying? Give me back my ring. It's my ring. I'm going to give you everything. You're going to get money. You're going to worry. But that's my ring. It's just my wedding ring. It's nothing but you just give it back. I don't know why I got it. And I said, okay, so this is the ring that, 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 that I have as a reminder of that day of my marriage and then of my kidnap, <laughs> which more or less same were same difference, way, so. exactly. Yeah. So, so, so um, I was putting a, in, a, in, a, in a shack in the outskirts of Mexico. I was blindfolded, I was handcuffed, and I was tied up with a bag over my head. And uh, as Mike was saying, I, I, was not, I, I, was not a, I didn't give my life to Christ back then. I was not walking a lot with God. And, um, but I started just praying. I said, no, not, not freestyle like I do right now, but like our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be the name of the name. And, and suddenly I sense an overwhelming sense of peace, like, like a very few times that I have felt before. After that, I didn't go to a psychologist or anything because of the trauma. After that, was ordeal was over. I think because of that, because what I remember is just being tied up, 
surrounded by people, points to my head, cussing, saying that they needed money, they contact my parents, blah, blah, blah. And I said, this is going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. And I knew that I was going to be fine. And I was, I'm probably more nervous right now than I was back then. It was like just an overwhelming sense of peace. That is, that, that is amazing. Uh, and uh, my understanding is while that was happening to you, Lorena yes. is now with your family. Yes. Okay. They're coming yes. together because the way this works is that they, they said, raise some money. Yes. Give us some money. When you give us some money, we'll free a little. Yes, exactly. That's now, and my understanding, though, is in these circumstances, people that have been kidnapped, um, not all are released. No. M many, are, many are kept for many, many days. And there was a very famous mean guy called Mocho Orejas because he used to uh, send you the ear of your loved one just for you to pay more or whatever. So he, it's... I was surrounded by very mean guys, let me tell you. Yeah. Very, very mean guys. I still remember their faces and and I mean it was it was it was it was it was bad. Yeah. But but that's that that specific time also, um, Lorena also starts saying this this, right. this the, the, the sense of peace that said he, suddenly he, she started praying with my mom and I said and she said, He's fine, he's gonna be fine. Right. More or less at the time that they were, they were releasing me. Yeah. So at the same time that you're being released, Lorena is in a different place. Yes. All right. But because she's in prayer. Exactly. That's uh, right. With my she, mom, yeah. prayer warriors. You know. So it's it, it's it's hard for us to understand, you know, how you could have a uh, a sense of peace, as you call it, in, yeah. in this particular case. But that situation had profound effect on you, had a huge impact on 100%, you. 100 percent, Mike, 100 okay. percent. Um, what's the, what, if you were going to, you know, in this short time we have, what's the biggest impact it had? Well, if I can tell you that at that specific moment God changed my life, no. It, I mean, it, how I describe it, it just lit a very long wick. Mm -hmm. And then many, many years that firecracker. So you didn't exploded. come out of that, get released, and go into the priesthood no. then? No, no, no. I was. <laughs> I went to a bar, and uh, <laughs> I mean, after that, I was just doing my thing. I was blessed enough to uh, started looking for somewhere to go uh, after being in Mexico, and uh, we were going to Madrid to live there. That got canceled. God's plan, Lorena, and I didn't understand it. We already have parties dressed up like. Uh, uh, flamenco girl and whatever because we were leaving and two, two weeks before everything got canceled and Lorena was wow what, God why and then fast forward two years later um, Alejo or well, three years later my son was born Alejo in Mexico and I got an offer a very good job in, in, in New York to go to New York that was my dream job because I was working in Wall Street Mexico in, in the stock market in Mexico so I never been to New York before but I saw everything that impacts New York, no? So I wanted to go there, and uh, fast forward, I went there. And then, again, I just c cannot tell you that I was behaving properly. I mean, I, I think that at that time, I was just clinging to, to, to making money because I needed to survive for my family. I had three, ki three children right now at that age because Isabel and Patricia were born in Princeton, New Jersey, and I was commuting from Princeton to New York every day. And. Uh, I was living my life like, I mean, God has always had a hand on me, but I like said, yeah, thank you on Sundays, or I went to church Sundays in Catholic church, and I said, tip my hat to him sometimes. But I was just like in the hectic environment of anxiety, of money, of drinking, of partying, of going out, or maybe finding excuses to go out maybe to some places just because a client is coming also with me. Mm -hmm. So I was not, I, I was not living a, 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 a very, um, the life that I'm living right now. Yeah, so what, that, that started to change. Yeah, so, so, so what changed in this? It wasn't your circumstantial situation. No, no, because I mean, I, I, then I went to Miami and I, the, the lifestyle in Miami, you, you know, you have seen it and I was living that lifestyle also. And, uh, like Don Johnson. The, exactly, okay. the convertible <laughs> and everything. And, uh, and, uh, but, but again, that, that, that event led me to New York, led me to Miami, and then in 08, the, th the market crashed and said, do you want to go to, back to Mexico? If not, you, we're going to have to cut you off in, in, in the work that I was doing. 
And I said, no, I'm not going to go back to Mexico. Thank God I had the green card, which is another topic. It's a super long process. And I am super, super grateful for this country and everybody, what they did. And I pro legal immigration 100%. I mean, because it's, 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 this country is very, very fair in the amount of people that they bring, bring in. So I had, thank God, the, the, the green card. So I was able to uh, not work there anymore, take a couple of months off. And then I got an offer here to Mary Lynch. So I started working Mary Lynch 13 years ago. And then I started meeting, uh, meeting my friends and meeting people like, like Mike and people, people like David and people like, uh, like Joe Calvert and, and the, the, so many people that I've met here in Houston that that started having a, a huge impact in my life. I said, everybody was happy and everybody was, I mean, on fire and talking about God and reading the Bible. And I said, what's this about the Bible? And I've never read the Bible before. And, I, and, and in Mexico, nor in Miami, nor in New York, I, I, I didn't have one Christian friend. One, not even one. I didn't know what a Christian was. I didn't know how they looked. I didn't know how they talk. I didn't know. <coughs> In my family, there's not one of them, not, not even close. I mean, everybody's, the, the people that I know is, are, are, are Catholics, and, and, but I didn't know of the Bible, I didn't read the Bible. So that's starting to change with my business partner and here in, in, in Houston, that started changing, changing my cravings. I mean, I think that God, what, what God did in my heart is is he alerted my mind. I mean, the way, the way God started working with me is that my, my subconscious start, he starts working on my conscience, like, like, like literally my conscience. And he started me working here. And I said, when I was coming here to, 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 to Houston first, just reading and getting, getting read the Bible and getting read the gospel and understanding and understanding, my, my kids were like, Dad, are we going to church Sunday? Yes, we are. Are you going to cry again? <laughs> I don't know. Pro most probably, yes. Because God was cleansing me. And what he did is, I think that in my, in my case, he started ch chasing my cravings. I think my cravings of what I craved started getting redirected. Not that I have some cravings again anymore of some things that are not very healthy or good. But they got very, very diminished. And I think what, 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 what he gave me is just an outer state of mind, of a heart. He literally changed my heart. And starting, he started redirecting my cravings to something else, to be here on Sundays, yeah. to, to hang around with people that, that, that were like-minded. He started like making me serve and, and yeah. yeah. When you came here, well, I still remember when you came, I can still picture the day you, you and Lorena walked in the class for the first yes. time. And uh, the story you told me at the time, the reason you were here was because you were trying to find a place for the kids. Yes. To plug the kids into a church and an, an environment because you wanted to be able to anchor those things in. Exactly. Because you wanted the kids to be changed and anchored or whatever. Yes. Have you. Did you expect, because your craving at that time was not for your walk, it was to be the father for the children. That's exactly right. And, I, and, 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 and the, more, the more I saw families, and the more I see people, and the more I see people really, really living the gospel, I said, I want that. I mean, I, I exactly want that. I mean, I've never gone to, to, for example, to a wedding that they didn't give alcohol. I mean, that doesn't exist in Mexico, for example. And everybody was like on fire and dancing and happy. That's and in I, Louisiana, too, exactly, by the way, but go ahead. Exactly, and I said, and I, and I said, and, 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 just, and, and, just the, and just the livelihoods, no? I, I mean, I, I talk about a little bit about, about, about my kidnapping, and, uh, and uh, I think that they, uh, just, just that freedom that I started seeing of people, of, of really, really joy, of really peace. I mean, all the, then I understood that it's called the fruit of the Spirit, but, uh, but I wanted that. I started craving that, and as Mike said, not only, not only for me, for, for, for my children, for my generation. I mean, I'm the first Christian in my generation, and I know that that's going to change a lot of things. It caused me a little bit of strife, as Mike knows, with uh, some family members that they didn't understand, that they thought I was joining a cult. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, so when you look, because I know we've had a lot of conversations about the way you're... Uh, 
your siblings, your parents. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, <clears throat> in dealing with family, uh, we're talking about how do you rest in God? Yeah. Um, that was that was a difficult thing for you to be able to do because the family dynamics of what you had to deal yes, with. Yes. Yes. You know, what helped you? What helped you to deal with? Um, still being a loving, caring member of the family yes. when people had different views and perspectives than what you had now? Yes. Well, for me, I think it was very important um, as a visual uh, finding, finding my sequoias. No? I think that uh, I went once to California and saw these sequoias and I was like, huge, 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 huge trees, but humongous trees. And the way they do, the, the roots are not very deep, but they're anchored with other sequoias. They anchor themselves. So the whole forest is connected exactly, all the way across. Exactly, so that when the winds come, the way they, they, they survive that is by being connected. So finding my sequoias, Mike, I think it was, it was key for me. Uh, like you, no? Sequoia, that, that, that starting just, just, it was no downside. I mean, it was, it was no, no turning back. I'm gonna walk, but the fortitude is started to meet people like Joe Calvert, like Fred Calvert, like you, people that I started just living life with them. And, 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 and I think that's why it's so important to have this, this kind of groups, because the church is, is, is a living. The church is group of people. The church is interaction with people. The church is living life with others. So I think that it's not that it's substituted by any chance, my family, because I, again, I have a very, very loving family. What's changed in you, what you were sharing with me, is that your, your desires on how you want to be seen by others. That's right. The impact is uh, the, the kidnapping. Yes. It really changed you with that. In yes. What way? Again, uh, when people uh, in Mexico, uh, everybody presents themselves and says, hey, I'm a licenciado, no? or I'm a lawyer, I'm this, I'm this and that. And I was playing that game. No? Senior Vice President of Investments or whatever. Cool title. Yeah, exactly. Nothing It's worth like CEO, CFO, whatever. And then I start meeting these sequoias, no? Here in Houston. The sequoias, that, that group of friends that are hyper, 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 uh, um, I mean, in, here in the world, are red, super well read super good uh, uh, in, in, in entrepreneurs, super successful financially. And I was once serving with one guy, with, with Fred, Fred Caldwell, a dear friend of ours, and he runs this massive... Yeah, it's one of the top, if you've seen the Caldwell companies. The real estate Lake, business. It's, it's, yeah, it's one yes. of the top uh, master plan communities uh, been recognized year over year, like in the country. Yes. And I, he's got hundreds and hundreds of employees and I don't know how many acres on the development. He's literally one of the tops in the field nationally. Yeah. And I started serving with Mike and with him on an event that we do twice a year called Outback, JH Outback. Probably you, you've heard a little bit. And I said, this guy was like, hey, come on, cleaning the toilets. And then I'm going, going there and serving and I'm parking the cars. And, and I said, Mike, and I and started lifting things and also with Joe Calvert, and this was, Joe was almost 60 or 70, almost 70, and I threw my back and I said, man, I mean, why don't we hire somebody to do this? And, 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 <laughs> and, he, and yeah. he said, because well, I know we can get some cheap people. So Just exactly. <laughs> I, I can get you some cheap Mexicans. <laughs> what are you I mean, we, we, we can hire somebody, you and I have a whiskey and a cigar. <laughs> And he told me, I mean, he, he, he showed me a lesson and he said, you know what, because we, we, have, to, we have to work together and this is our mission. And, and then it hit me and, and it took me back to, to where Jesus uh, uh, took a towel and, and, and wiped the feet. I mean, and that, that was for the lowest of the servants because when you were walking back then, you, you, your feet got, got, got so dirty and you were able to go to the communal table and, and you saw the, everybody's feet, so that's why you need to wash them before eating. But that was for the lowest of the lowest servants. I mean, that's the ones who do it. So actually, the apostle said, no, you're not going to wash my feet because you're not going to humiliate more than that. So when I saw that, I said, man, these people are more, are more they put more importance in that towel than in the title. So their title is the title, whatever. No, this is, I started hanging around with people that the towel 
The towel that you used to wash everybody's feet was more important than the title. And I said, I want that. I mean, I want people to remember me for my towel, not for my title. Yeah, it's powerful, power, very profound with this. And so because of that, um, you, you made a statement to me that just, that, that when we were talking about this, that, that rocked me. And that you said that, and I had to write it down to make sure that uh, you felt that you were more tied up after the kidnapping than you experienced while you were in the kidnapping. Yes. What did you, what did you mean by that? Well, I think that sometimes we uh, put ourselves shackles. No? I mean, if you are, if you if you if you go to place to rest is whiskey. That, that that's a shackle. If your place to go is anxiety, if your place to go to, of refuge is money, it's or food or food or whatever. Good luck with that. So, I think I was living in Miami a, 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 a back then, a more sh a more shackled life. If that if that makes sense, that when I was tied up and just feeling the love of God and free and liberated and uh, and just still with His stillness. So. So, you so yeah. Think about this. Uh, you know, verse sixteen. Verse sixteen. We yes. spent time on Henderson Cano. Is that uh, verse sixteen? We ended up last week, which which let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so they may receive mercy and find grace in helping us in our time of need. And what happens when we get in our time of need? One of the battles we run into, right, is not resting. But it, it, Alejo gave me the scripture verses. We were talking about this this week. You know, it's Exodus fourteen fourteen. It says, the Lord will fight for you. It doesn't end there. You know, I knew the Lord would fight for me. But the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. And when we talked about this, is that I, I, I pictured you with this. I mean, I kept thinking of, you know, you were, it's, you know of these shows of, of the, the people being kidnapped with a sack over their head yes. and stuff. That wasn't a movie. That was your life experience. But you were yes. telling me you were sitting there. You're you're, you're handcuffed. You got a bag over your head, yeah. uh, which forced you, as you told me, to be still. To be still. Yep. And to focus not on your situation, your circumstances, yeah. but literally yep. on God in that situation. Yes. Yes. And and for me, my message is for people that I tell these stories, let don't don't let God be your last resource. Let God be your first resource. I, I mean, you, you wanna you wanna you wanna transform 150 people to Christ in a second, in a second, in 30 seconds. You put 150 people on a plane, put them 30,000 feet in the air, and dive that plane 30 seconds. Oh my God! Please, I forgive me. You, 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 so, 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 so let let God, yeah. let God be your first resource, not your last resource. Yeah, that's. I was talking to Bob Shally, who was. Uh, Highly decorated Vietnam veteran. He wrote an amazing book on, on the Vietnam War. And uh, uh, he said, my wife is a zealot in her walk. Uh, real strong prayer woman. Uh, I said, so Bob, tell me about your belief. He says, I have a belief that there is no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. Amen. That's right. He that's said, right. And that's what he lived. Because I said, what was it like in Vietnam and the battles and the carnage? Because he was in whatever the, 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 when you read about Vietnam and some of the more difficult, bloody, Bob was in those fights. You know, the most gentle-spirited guy you'd ever meet. Uh, he actually stayed in the military all the way to leading black ops things. And, we, and he talked about where faith comes into play. It's, a, it's just an important part of, part of, part of somebody's walk. So uh, let me, let me before, we, before we wrap here, uh, uh, let me open up the floor if, if anyone has any questions based upon this subject. I saw Tino's hand cam come up or whatever. We've got, we've got time, and I've built this in or whatever. So. Okay, uh, Psalm 34, 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the man who takes refuge in him. 100%. So um, you, you experienced this sense of peace, and then you went off to New York and, and Miami and all that. Did, did, you, did you start craving that peace that you had tasted yes. during that? And, and how, how, how often did, how did that play a role in, in you? You know, surrendering to God. Very good question, Tino. I should I, repeat I, it for people so yes. that who are listening on this. I mean, I've heard them. Yeah, that, uh, the, uh, the question of Tino is, if, if, if when I experienced that kidnapped in Mexico, that sense of peace that I was talking about, 
that did I, did I feel it or the, did I crave it or did I sense it throughout my, my life in Miami and New York? And the, and the answer is, is, is yes. I mean, I, I've always longed for it, longed for it, but I was seeking my refuge some, somewhere else, to be honest. I mean, I was, I was searching for that. I think everybody finds refuge in something. I was searching for my refuge something else. When I started to feeling it again, you know, is here. When I pressed my life into the Bible, when I started to come into Bible, Bible study, Mike, Mike and Tommy has been a blessing in my life. That I can tell you, a blessing, big time. When I started understanding the word, that's where I was weeping constantly on Sunday services because I, that, that feeling, I started to remember that feeling again of the Holy Spirit moving in my heart that now I know that the Holy Spirit was protecting me back then. So the, the, the issue about my kids asking me to cry, the emotion of this is like I was crying out of love. I mean, because I was overwhelmed by this power, overwhelming sense of joy that God, God has given me. But yeah, Tino, I mean, it's, it's until I started turning those cravings, turning my life around, gave my life to God, get baptized, that I started really feeling that thing that I think we are designed for that. I think God made us to be able, for him to be able to love on us. We're designed for that, I think. Because we, we are the only creatures in, in the universe in the, and, the, and they keep exploring more and more and more and we are just in a speck of, of this world. We're here and we're his joy. So yeah, very good question. I, I, I think we're designed for that. I, I think deep inside we long for that love of the Father. Yeah, yeah. And, and because I'm familiar with your journey because we've talked about this many times, it wasn't like he came out of the kidnapping and all of a sudden saw it and the next day mm. you know, something took place. It was a process, it was a journey, it was an uh, uneasiness in his walk. How long did it take for that? Well, I was kidnapped in 2000 and um, I started coming here 13 years ago, so um, took Took, took a long time. Took a long hang, time. Hang on, I'm catching up with yeah, you. It's like eight, nine years. Yeah. Yeah. John, Steve. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to ask. So, after you got free, what kind of struggles with forgiveness did you have with the uh, kidnapper? Did you even think about it? Did it well, just flush out? Or yeah, so forgiveness would be a good question with that. So, what she was asking is, uh, what you know, when when you came out of that, you've been yeah. you know, held in a real dire situation. I, Make sense. There would be anger and stuff that would, would come out of that. How did you? That's a you that's a very that? good question, and it's a, it's going to be a hard answer because. But, but I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. Um, I started being like very careful with people like look like that, and that's and that's honest. At the beginning, um, the the people that hijacked me look like like the typical uh, Latin American soldier. So I think they were soldiers. Mm -hmm. So even when I was walking in a, in a store and a guy that looked like that approached me, I was like, hey, 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 hey. Stand, stand back. And that thing is a natural defense. But through the process, I already forgave them because they don't know any better. And, uh, and, and, and again, I also didn't know any better. So when people are lost, they're lost. I didn't have any guidance when I was very young. I had guidance of my mom and dad, but I didn't have somebody that read the Bible to me. So I, I was also in, 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 in there. So, so now I see that the power of prayer and not just praying the gospel can change lives. Mm. So they don't know any better. It's not, I'm not making an excuse for them, but that's how I feel right now. That they don't know any better, that maybe the devil has them in their mind or they're in drugs or whatever. But I already, it took me a long time, but I already forgave them of what they did because they don't know any better. It, it also, it's, it's making me think about is that uh, you grew up as a young boy, young man, uh, being what I call a church pew Christian. Show up on Sunday, sit in the church, yeah. listen to what's going on. On the back. But, it, but it's like, it, it's what this guy believes is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. And... I'll process that. But what took place with you is that you shifted That's right. from what he believes That's right. to what I believe. That's right. 
And it wasn't just what was being taught from you by Pastor Greg yes. or myself or anybody else. Yeah. It was you also went on this journey where you started reading a lot. Yeah. You started doing you started spending time each week. A lot. Uh, in, in trying to find it, 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 find scripture verses that would speak to you, yes. and trying to look at understanding, and that I yeah. think it was how influential was that in your work? No, big time. I'm, at the same time, I was getting my citizenship, so I was studying for my citizenship in that season of my life, and I went deep into the history of the United States, and deep into the history of just uh, 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 Anglo-Saxon Protestant history of this of this country and I figure out that they put in God we trust in the currency not 150 years ago 70 years ago with Eisenhower there was not there and they put it there with Eisenhower not before with Eisenhower a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. and they put one nation under God yeah. it wasn't there right. and there were people like us I mean there were no different people people back then didn't have three arms or four legs it was people like us but they were like-minded. And something triggered them to say, why don't we put this on the currency? Yeah, and, they, and they worry about the yes. Why don't we include one nation under God in the, and people said yes. So to your question, I think that there's hope. And there's hope, there's hope for everybody. There's hope for me, and there's hope for the people that kidnapped me via the word, via reading, via not only understanding the truth, but talking about it and spreading the truth mm -hmm. more and more in these times. No? Super. Yep. You're going to ask how long were you captive and how did it come about that you were released? Uh, it was, yeah, I was, it was a, quite a story and uh, it was, was some money exchanged and I was released. So, yes. how, so how long were you actually held captive? Uh, it was like a day or so. I mean, not, it, was, it was not long, but uh, but if they, if they would have told me that I was going to be, you're going to be released in a certain amount of hours, I wouldn't be suffering those hours. No? They just gave me like 50 pesos and released me in the, in the mornings in a place that was like, had no, no pavement. And there was like dogs in the street. And I think the dogs were smelling that the uh, adrenaline and they were like attacking me. And oh, it was terrible. I, 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 I don't want to revise that again, but it was it was <laughs> it was it was it was it was something not fun, and, and it's another thing. I think that they that I have I haven't been in hell, thank God, and I, but I I have seen it maybe in, on on Earth in some places, and that that part looked like that, and I've been in places that I think hell looks like that, but I also been here on Earth in places like heaven. And I think one of them is Brenham when we go to J.H. Child Park. <laughs> so, 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 so I strive to, right now, the desires of my heart is to be, to be more in the light and not in the darkness. Tommy? But your family paid the ransom, right? Yeah, yeah well, yeah. The, 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 the people got, got money and, and let me. There was a, a guy involved in Mexico that when, when they saw... Um, in, in, in the police, family members that are very connected in the government, and the, they, they started tracking the ATMs with my card, and they started seeing withdrawals of money, and, and yeah, but yes, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was good. It, it was a good outcome, I'm here, thank God. That's right. With my ring. Yes. <laughs> so, any other questions? So, it, here's a, what's on my heart right now. Uh, we've heard Alejo's story. The purpose of sharing your story, when you whatever it is you walk, and each and every one of you have your own story, by the way. Now, take a deep breath. I'm not going to ask each week somebody to come up here and do this. Okay? But I will from time to time do this. I think it's important for us to be able to share our story. And the reason why is because when we share our story, it helps people process their life and is a message of God's working and that's a takeaway that's an actionable item. It makes us rethink, makes us reflect, makes us kind of reconsider. Based upon what Aleha was shared with you, Give me two people who said, what did, you, what did you get out of his story? You know, we shared this in a Bible study group called the Bridge Class. <laughs> what did this say to you? Ted. You know, Leo, when you were sitting there under that mask and everything, and you got that relief, the Holy Spirit was with you. Yes. And I think that's one of the things we forget as Christians, and even as becoming <clears throat> Christians. God's always with us. Yes. Yeah. God always with you. Yes, Ted. 
Yeah. But we need to spend more time praying with uh, Christ and the Holy Spirit too. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you know what you made me think about just now, Ted, is being on stuck on I-10 whenever there's an accident and right. you're just dead still and you're sitting there. You know, you're never by yourself in that car at that moment at that yeah, time. Good point. That that the Holy Spirit is is right there with you. It's not in the passenger. He's just with you. And there's a presence that we can get frustrated around the circumstance or the situation. I recognize at this moment, at this time, in this situation, whatever it is that I'm dealing with, is that, that this, this indwellingness of the Holy Spirit, you know, is, it's real, is what I'm hearing you say. It is. You know, it's a, there's a realness that goes with it. What else? Anybody else? What'd you got? It, it seemed, you know, as you were talking about the sequoias, that really, you know, the visualization of that really kind of hit me, mm. because that's really how I became a Christian. Yep. It's, uh, I would like to think that it was God sending a beam of light to me, and, yeah. uh, but, it, but it was really just seeing uh, men, Christian men, yes. who were walking the walk, and that they, uh, that they, it wasn't performative, it was just who they were. Yes, they and, uh, and I think that that's one thing that is tough, because there's so many unbelievers that have nothing like mm-hmm. that. And, you know, I know it's not on us to save them, but... It's just, uh, I just think that that's a great visualization. I've never really heard that before. Yes. Yeah, I, I kind of wish that uh, our, uh, what did we call last thing, last night, uh, Dave? What did we call uh, uh, Burnham and Churnham, uh, grill them and something or other, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was our, it's our men's gathering. Uh, and as you were talking about the sequoias, my, the, the picture that popped into my mind was the picture that I showed you before yes. David's house. It was last night. Yeah. You know, we had a group of sequoias that came together. Mm-hmm. And that's what last night was. Mm-hmm. And it was, it's, it's just a graphic image. It's when the ladies come together for their Bible study. You go, that's, that's, the sequoias come together. Whenever we go to the faith center to serve, that's a, that's a gathering of sequoias. And we, we all need that. We all need that. It, 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 there's a hunger inside of us that a lot of times we don't give ourselves either permission or encourage ourselves to be a part of. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like last night I had some, you know, because of some family situations took place with somebody we were supposed to take to dinner and Tommy wasn't able to go. And so I'm sitting there going, well, I just, I, you know, I'll just, I'll, I'll cancel the meeting with the guys. I'll take the people to dinner. And I said, I can't do that. You know, because I, I from, just for me, I didn't need to go as a leader. I need to go for me. I wanted to go and connect last night with that group of men for a few minutes. So, I, you know, I sacrificed myself, and I went over there, and I ate. Right? <laughs> and then I went to dinner. <laughs> it was the coolest night ever. But I'm telling you, it just as I was driving away from there, heading over to you know, meet with, with Brandon and his girlfriend, Emily, who were in, Julie Dunleavy's uh, son and his, uh, his girlfriend were in town. And uh, I just... It's, I just felt so blessed to be a part of that community and be able to anchor into that group. It's real powerful, very powerful. Whatever. David? I was just say one thing about the play. I remember the Sunday that, that we met y'all, and, and hearing your story today, there was a point that I connect with, and that was just this time as you were being kidnapped, you just you knew there was something else. God was giving you peace. You knew there was something else. And then I fast forward to when we met you, and you guys were had come to Houston's first, and you were trying to find what that something else. Yes, was. very well said. And I just the action steps that you took to to pursue that, and I think that's something. You know, even today we can sense God's doing something, but yes. it's taking the action to press into that. Yes, that is the takeaway for me. And that, and uh, man, we're just really glad that we did get to meet you then. Thank you, Dave. Same here, Arlene. I'm impressed with, do you want to be known by your towel and not your title? Yes. 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 Uh, and, that's mo- and that's most of the people here. Eh? I, I, I can tell you. I mean, the, 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 the Christians and the Christians, how they walk, and not, not only how they talk, but what they do. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it blew me away. It blew me away. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't the yes. title of being a Christian that blew you away. No, no, no. It was the action that you saw and how they the used towel. the towel. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, and, and I didn't see that before. And I didn't, I mean, we did serve in Mexico and we served the poor. And when I was very young, we did go out and serve and serve and serve and serve. But it was more on, on, a, on, a, on a, not as deep, 
not as powerful, not as loving as I see it here. You, you, you change hats really quick. Yeah, and let me, let me, let me kind of edit good, that. Very just, good point. Let me edit that just a little bit, because what happens is when we get into these discussions, sometimes we, we get into discussions of something is bad and something is good. Yeah. And that's not what we're talking about here. You had parents who were church people that were I'm involved saying. in church who were going to walk, Love and you had a you. good Hard. sort of foundation when it comes to your, your, your church life. Your, that's what I hear. That, that's it. So, I mean, it's a, it was a foundation. But what takes place is, and this Hebrews uh, is, is especially chapter 4, not chapter 14, chapter 4, uh, <laughs> specifically com does a comparison, not of what's bad, but as good as all of these things are, look how much Christ is better, is stronger, is greater than. And that's what, what I'm hearing you say, is that this, it, it, it's not like you, you ran away from, you know, you weren't on the street, you know, mm. shooting crack into your arms, at least yeah. you haven't shared that part of your no, life no, with no, me. No. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that wasn't your walk. You know, no. there's no financial malfeasance that's going Nothing. on. You had a, you, you had a, a good life. Fantastic and, family. And, and you also have been a good guy. When I mean, you're not talking about, sir, you've been a good guy, you know, since you were little. That's, that's kind of your, that's why people are drawn to you, because you're just a good guy. But there's a light that is inside of you now that yeah. burns even more brighter yes. than that, that good guy thing. And that's, yes. your, that's the walk of, of, of your faith or whatever. And so yes. one of the things that's important to me every Sunday to do is that we spend some time talking about things. I, I want to make sure that we do this um, from a scripture standpoint. These are two scripture verses that Le Alejo and I have talked about over the last week and a half. You know, it's, uh, first of all, 1 Thessalonians, okay, uh, 5, 16 through 18, rejoice always, and this is what we've been talking about today, that in the middle of circumstance, situations, life situations, okay, rejoice always. And we think, how in the world can I rejoice when I'm stuck on I-10, or when, you know, when I open my checkbook and I see how little is in there, right? It doesn't say be happy, it just says rejoice. And I'm telling you, when that sack was over Leo's head, he wasn't going, yay, thank you, Lord. Okay, but rejoice always. It's, it's, it's the word rejoice, joy is in the center of it. And joy only comes from connection with God. Second was pray continually. That's easy for me to picture like he'll pray continually with a sack over his head. But the question is in 2022, each day that you walk up, how much time do you spend throughout the day in prayer? I'm not talking about on your knees wearing a hair shirt like some of the monks used to do in, in olden times. Uh, but I'm talking about is before you go into a meeting, do you stop and pray, not for you, but for the, the person you're going to be meeting with? Do you stop and pray for God to be able to use you to, for him to receive glory when you're in the check checkout line? That may be, you may think that's facetious, but when you walk in the grocery store, you may cross paths with somebody that you get to simply have an opportunity to go, hi. And, and that hi and that smile is, is enough to have an impact on somebody else. And we, we, we diminish that. And the last thing is, is that to give thanks in all circumstances. And what's most important is that last clause we have a tendency to drop. All right? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I think uh, one of the things that I realized and listened to Alejo is that the Christian walk is a process. We know that. And it's interesting to see your process, and I've been able to see it because we're friends with your family. And your legacy is the most important thing in That's your right. children. That's right. And we have watched them. We've prayed for them. We've gone through yeah. their walk. And they are amazing persons. Yes. Yes. And thank you, Tommy. Thank God. That's because of the change that you had in your life mm. and your commitment to the Lord, which they saw getting them here every Sunday. It was a struggle getting the teenagers to church. Mm -hmm. But you did. Yes. And they changed. Yes, yeah. Because God took a hold of their life and changed it. Mm hmm Did something and about it. And it gives me great joy to see what beautiful adults, be, young adults, that they are today. Move Thank you, Tommy. Do that then. So and here's the Thank other you. thing. It's Philippians 4, the 6 or 7. Lay actually sends this to me every now and because it's just, it has huge impact on you. It says, do not be anxious about anything. He knows I need to hear that often because of the battleground that, I, that plays in my mind. It's not out of choice. It's just life for me. But I recognize that the ground that I play in is I, it's, I have to be reminded, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, 
with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And it doesn't stop there, okay? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. And that's what I wanted us to end on today. What happens is we look and process life through our understanding, the way we see things. Right? And for me, I know that when I look at stuff, I still sometimes process things through the eyes of a 14-year-old because of stuff that happened when I was 14. And so the brain gets locked back there. Mm -hmm. right? And then fortunately, there's a maturity that takes place. And Leo's a perfect example of this maturing. He sees things differently today than he did when he was 14 in Mexico because of this maturing that takes place. But he still, this day, I still, all of us, have to watch out to is that it transcends our understanding of what God's capability is in our life. The reason I ask him about his relationship with his dad, he has a great relationship with his dad. He had a very good relationship with his dad. But there were obstacles and things that, that, that he wanted more from and, it, and he couldn't see how that could possibly be. And I still remember the phone call you and I had when you were in awe of this love that was poured into me. I still remember the day my dad sent me a letter that Tommy asked him to write when she and I went to the J Ranch out in California. She, she hammered my dad for, I don't know how long, a month or so, whatever. But she got it, my dad, the only letter I've ever received from him. Yeah. Right? And I, 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 needless to say, that letter sits in a very special place in my office in a, in a folder in a notebook behind me. Right? But, and, 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 and I never believed my dad would have be, be able to find ways to express his love for me in the way that he did. It's a profound, profound day. There's a healing that comes in as that. But, but those things, the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ, in Christ Jesus. So Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this gathering of amazing hearts and minds that are, that are, that are thirsty to have your word speak to us. In some way, sometimes, and sometimes the most important way it speaks to us is the people, the sequoias that uh, Alejo uh, has, uh, has referred to this day. The sequoias um, that you put into our lives that you help surround us, Lord. But Father, I just, I, what's on my heart right now is help us to realize that other people look at us as their sequoias. Who is it that sees you that way? May we go out and we re re realize that our walk, by your grace and your will, has been designed to have impact on others. Help us to be bold that Lisa talk, talked about last week. Help us to be bold in that walk. Father, we pray for this and all things in your heavenly name. Amen.